السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His companions, his household May Allah bless them, bless every one of us Grant us goodness and give us the best of homes and families May Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant solution To those who are looking for solutions May Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant ease To those who are struggling with any form of difficulty Be it in the family unit or outside of that family unit In whatever way it may be May Allah grant cure to those who are sick and ill May Allah سبحانه وتعالى have mercy upon those who have passed on Amen. My brothers and sisters, that wa alaykum as salam when I first got up here was very, very encouraging. One of the reasons why I'm here at ELM, mashallah, when we speak, people respond. And that's very good for the speaker because at least you don't feel like you're just speaking to a wall, mashallah, but, but rather you're speaking to brothers and sisters who love each other for the sake of Allah. I feel the love, mashallah. And I felt it. There were brothers here saying, can I take a picture and can I not take a picture and so on? Can I greet and can I shake and can I hug, etc.? My brothers and sisters, that is not always possible, number one. Number two is, that's not going to get you any closer to Jannatul Firdaus. I'm sure you know that. I always say, you take a picture with any sheikh or anyone, you cannot show an angel that and say, listen, have a picture with this guy, you've got to let me through here, you know? <laughs> not at all. But, mashallah, there is, to a certain extent, excitement amongst people sometimes. If you'd like, the most intelligent of the lot are those who sit where they are, turn around and take that selfie from where they are seated. And they don't need to ask anyone about anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Similarly, I heard one brother saying, I'd like to be like you. And someone sometimes say, I'd like to, my children to be like you. And I say, you're aiming very low. You've got to aim much higher than a guy like me. A guy like me, subhanAllah. You've got to aim higher for the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and the likes. The true heroes are those who've passed on. And their record is already, subhanAllah, for us to see the companions of the Prophet sallallahu who were chosen by Allah Almighty himself. Allah. Anyway, the topic this evening is towards a happy family, mashallah. We're searching for happiness, for contentment, for goodness, for success. Guess who is the owner of all those? Allah. Who is the owner of all those? Allah. Allah. So if you'd like all of that, primarily you start off by knocking the right door. If you happen to search for happiness, goodness, contentment, success, money, who doesn't want money? Everyone wants money, right? Who wants money? Put up your hand. Mashallah, those who don't, come hand it over here. ELM needs it, mashallah. ELM needs it, barakallah fikum. They're doing some good work, alhamdulillah. So everyone wants wealth, everyone wants success, everyone wants good health, everyone wants everything nice. All those nice things, the owner of them is Allah. Develop your relationship with Allah. Develop your relationship with the word of Allah. It's the first step to your success. And it's the first step towards a happy family. You need to develop a relationship with Allah. So what happens? I'm always inspired by a specific hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. I mentioned it in this masjid. And I'm going to repeat it again today. So, that beautiful narration is where the Prophet ﷺ tells us something after he was asked a question by his companions. They asked him a question. Very powerful question. Before I get to the question, what's your aim? What's my aim? Ultimately, where do we want to reach? Can you tell me? Jannatul Firdaus. It means paradise. Ultimately, I want to reach paradise. I, I tell you something. Moments ago, I was in North London. I wanted to reach this masjid. What did I do? What do you think I did? I was driving, by the way. What do you think I did? Do I know London? GPS. The brother says GPS. He is 100% spot on. It's called Tom. Tom. But there's a lady speaking. I don't know. Confusing, right? My brothers and sisters, that's exactly what I did. East, as soon as I said East London, one of the first drop downs was East London Mosque. Wow, it goes to show how many people actually come to the Masjid Walillahi Alhamdu Wal Minna. It's a good thing. The first drop down is East London Mosque. And I clicked on it and it started showing me, right? When I missed one turn, it showed me what to do. You need to do this and now go back and come back onto this road. You know why? I'm trying to get somewhere. I made a little mistake. Perhaps we were talking, it was quite busy, the traffic was a lot at this time of the day. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we have something more serious than a navigation system that will take you straight to your ultimate goal, which you all said is paradise. And that is the word of Allah. Allah tells you, turn left, you turn left. You turn right, you turn right. Go straight, you go straight. Stop, you stop. Go back, you go back. Make a U-turn, you make a U-turn. But the problem is, we don't turn on that GPS. The GPS is such that it actually tells you speed trap ahead. Wow, subhanAllah. You know what's going on. You want that happiness. There is a tom tom showing you the happiness. In fact, we cannot even call it a tom tom. We need to call it words of guidance. There is a direction straight. It will lead you to a specific goal. 
And you know that. But the problem is, you know, we're too engrossed in the world. Let me tell you, there is a balance between this dunya and the akhirah. This worldly life and the hereafter. There is a beautiful balance. Those who tell you to divorce yourself from this world have not understood the world. And those who tell you to enjoy it to the degree that you've forgotten where you're going to go have also not understood the reality of the world. Allah says when he speaks about a dua, a prayer, a supplication that is to be made. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا وَاللَّهُ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ from among the people, they are those whom when they call out to Allah, they strike the balance between this life and the next life. So they say, oh our Lord, grant us goodness in this world. That's the beginning of the dua. Amazing, you know, man is such that we want the goodness of this world first. And Allah says, we will give you the goodness of this world. We will give you the goodness of this world. Not necessarily what you think is your goodness. I was speaking to some brothers today, and I want to ask all of you within yourselves to look within yourselves and see. Do you know that if sometimes, if the plan you had for your own life was granted exactly as you wanted it, perhaps you would not have seen the, the successes that you have seen as a result of doors being closed by Allah for you. You need to be happy. Where are you today? Sometimes you're sitting, you've got your own business and you're doing well. But you were fired from a job just three years ago. Subhanallah. That was not firing. That was Allah closing the door to say, I think you can do better on your own. Subhanallah. And we got depressed. I lost the job. And Allah says, why are you getting depressed? Pick up the pieces. It was not in your hands. Or it might have been to a small degree according to our allowance. And you know what? That would be something positive. The affairs of a true believer are amazing. They can never be negative. They are always good. When something happens your way, say Alhamdulillah. When it doesn't happen your way, say Alhamdulillah twice. Because it's happened the way Allah wanted it anyway. It's amazing. Don't become despondent. I was saying we're searching for Jannah to Firdaus. The owner of the Jannah is Allah. He's shown us the path, but we're not prepared to turn it on. Why? We haven't yet read the Quran with its meaning. We haven't yet understood it. We haven't bothered to put it into practice. We haven't bothered to become good people. Now let's get back to that hadith I was saying, one of my favorite. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what are the characteristics of those who are in Jannah? Those in paradise? What would be the reasons that got them into paradise? Wouldn't you like to know that? A person who won a match or a race or an examination, a person who passed with flying colors, and if you needed to get to that position, wouldn't you like to have a meeting with them to say, how did you get to where you've got to? Please let me know. And then they'll tell you, I did this, I did this, and I did this. You have to do that. Because if you're looking at someone as a role model, someone somewhere you want to be, you need to know what they did to get there so that you can actually get there too. The people of Jannah, in Jannah, I want to know how did they get there? Why? Because I want to do that. So do you think the Prophet ﷺ gave a long lecture and he told them because getting Jannah is my main goal and yours, getting paradise. Did he give them a long lecture? No, he just said two words. Two words, you know what they were? Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. Chapter closed and hadith ended. You need two things. The people of Jannah have two qualities, main, predominance. What are they? The consciousness of Allah, meaning the relationship with Allah. And secondly, greatness in character and conduct, meaning the relationship with the rest of the creatures of the same Allah. We've always spoken about this. So if you want paradise, work on yourself, work on your relationship with Allah. That's the key to start it. And you will get happiness in this world because when you realize that everything happens according to Allah and when he's given you the capacity to do something, the energy, the mental ability, the intellect, the, the opportunities, seize them, make use of them. Don't be lazy. Don't sit back and say, well, if Allah wants, it will happen. Allah gave you the capacity. Allah gave you everything. You needed to get up to do it and Allah would have opened the doors for you. But because you didn't, the doors remained closed. <clears throat> Imagine you want to marry someone and you just look at them every day and smile. I mean, what's going to happen? <laughs> Subhanallah. You've got to do something. Open your mouth. Go and see the father. Go and see someone else. Go and do something about it within your capacity. If after you've done everything about it, the doors were all closed and everything was closed and even the big black gate in the front became closed. Then you know what? You've got to say Allah didn't want it and walk away. Never mind. Perhaps Allah will bless you with children better than the children you would have had had you gotten that in a way that these may see greater success than those. Who knows? Who knows? Only Allah knows. Do you know the future? The answer is no. Allah knows. So be happy. Just do your best and leave the rest in the hands of Allah. No matter what. You lost your job. You lost this. You lost that. Take it in your stride. Alhamdulillah. You'll have a happier home. You'll have a happier family. People are stressed. You know what? They can't show that stress to the people they work with because they're big guys there. 
They want to impress the girls at work so they don't show them any bad habits, nothing. But you go home, first thing, you start swearing, you start screaming, you start shouting, you start showing your real self. Subhanallah, subhanallah. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu says, you know who's the best person? The one who's best to his family members, always the best. Do you know why? That person has shown the family that when I'm upset, I'm still a good guy. When I'm angry, I'm still a good guy. When I'm hungry, I'm still a good guy. When I've suffered a bad day, I'm still a good guy. When I've suffered a loss, I'm still a good guy. And I'm always a good guy. Then you're really a good guy, subhanallah. But if you're a good guy outside the home and when you come back home, then you're not a good guy at all. Who knows better what type of a person you are? Those at home. So that's the reason why the Prophet ﷺ tells us, watch who you are. You want to really know who a man is, go ask his wife. You want to really know who a woman is, ask the husband. Or ask the family members. If they're honest enough, they'll tell you the truth. May Allah protect us. Amen. Be honest. Be upright. You lose a deal because of your honesty. No problem. Allah will give you baraka, baraka in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us barakah. The meaning of barakah is blessings in simple English. You achieve blessings. What's the meaning of blessings? You have that contentment within you. You are delighted with the little that Allah's given you because so much has been achieved with that little Allah gave you rather than having the millions and the billions and you can't even see your left from your right. You're not even happy. You don't even know. Pillar to post. Blessings are snatched away when sins are committed. Remember that. You have the best spouse, the best person Allah chose for you as a husband or as a wife. You cannot see it because you know what? You're involved in other sins. So you're blinded. Blinded by whom? By shaitan. Your home is no longer happy because your relationship with Allah is weak. Your relationship with shaitan has become strong. Your relationship with shaitan becomes strong. You become blind. What happens to the blindness? The best wife on earth. I don't want to say, but perhaps I should. Should I? People would die to be married to your wife and you're still alive. <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. Do you understand what I mean? People would say, how lucky is this guy? Wow, the, the sisters will say, this guy's got a really good husband, uh, wife. And you know what? We can't see that. We're blinded because there's some sin happening. Either there's haram income there, either there's haram relationships there, either there's haram food there, either there's something wrong happening there, either there's no salah, there's no connection with Allah. So the coolness of the eyes will not be achieved because the heat of the sin has overtaken that coolness. This is why... I started off by saying point number one, develop your relationship with Allah. People think, ah, oh, but that point, you know, everyone just talks about it. I'm being honest. The owner of the solution is Allah. People across the globe, I've had the opportunity of communicating and interacting with some non-Muslims who are very, very famous on earth. And they have told me, we have no contentment. We're looking for happiness. You know what keeps them ticking, clicking, some of them? The drugs. The alcohol, the intoxicants, the dirty life, the attention, etc. Not at all. A true believer knows that that is very temporary and very fake. It has a heat to it that would add to the flame rather than extinguish it. So be calm. Concentrate on what Allah has given you. You have a job. Cherish it. Work hard. The money you've earned, when it is really earned, you'll have a happy family. You know why? Many of us, we have a job. Supposed to work from what time to what time here? Approximately 9 to? 9 to 5, mashallah, you're lucky. With us, it's 8 to 5. Okay. You guys have one hour knocked off. I think it's called Greenwich Mean Time, right? Okay, so you have one hour less, 9 to 5. And you have an hour for lunch, I guess, right? Lunch and salah, I hope, okay? Or is it salah and lunch? Either way, so long as the salah is there. But you get to work at, maybe, maybe, you're a good guy, you get to work at 8. And then you're on your phone up to quarter past 8. And then when the boss walks out, you're playing your video games. And you're clocking it one after the other. And then when the guy comes back, you're ducking and diving. Before it used to be newspapers. Nowadays, there's no newspapers. You know why? Technology is taken over and we're doing everything. Subhanallah. And you know what? You're stealing from your boss's time. Are you allowed to do this? No. If you, if you are allowed, some bosses say, look, I'll give you some time to play video games. Anyone from amongst us who's a boss who allows that? Mashallah, there's a brother who put his hand up. I think he must be uh, enjoying playing the game. You need someone to play with, right? May Allah grant us ease. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So to be very honest, that money, that income that came to you, technically you might think I worked for it and I earned it. But you know what? There will be some lack of some blessing because something went wrong within it that was not meant to be. You've actually stolen a portion of it. I know it might sound a bit hard, but it's a fact. Islam teaches us to look into even that much. Subhanallah. Even that much. You pinched from someone. You were not honest. You went to work. Work properly. Work hard. You know, when you've earned that money through your own sweat, trust me, you will realize its value, number one. Number two, Allah will allow you to have the bargains that are available in a way that you didn't imagine. I earned a thousand pounds and I bought goods that lasted me so long. There was another guy who spent 10,000 pounds on something similar and it was depleted before he knew. But Allah blessed me. May Allah grant us that blessing. How many of us, we earn a little, but end of the week, end of the month, we still have change. And how many of us earn a lot? End of the week, there's no more money left. You're oiling something haram. Check it out. There is something happening in the system that needs cleaning a little bit. And this is why we say, my brothers and sisters, something a lot of us don't talk about is the purification of the heart. 
You want true happiness, purify your heart. Look at your brother with love. Look at your sister with, mashallah, the genuine look. You don't want to attack and harm and hurt and hate everyone on earth. For what? These are your brothers and sisters, like it or not. Subhanallah. They are your brothers and sisters. When someone is down, don't slap them further down. Think of how can I empower this person? How can I bring them up again? You bring someone up, Allah will bring you even higher. Subhanallah. You want the help of Allah, help another person.